Sign Boasting. Today, I want to talk to you about the secret tip that once you know, you wonder why somebody had never explained it before to you because it's so simple, it's so obvious, and it's going to unlock your writing to be more clear and let you feel more confident when you're much better understood by your supervisors, readers, peer reviewers, and everyone else for the rest of your career. So what I'm going to do by the end of this video, you're going to see real examples from real students of how they didn't apply signposting and it could be applied better. We're also going to go straight to the peer-reviewed literature so you can see signposting in practice in actual published scientific articles. By the end of this, you'll be able to use it yourself right away for immediate improvements in your writing. So let's dive straight in. I pulled up here a recent article from American Sociological Review that's going to illustrate the concept of signposting in practice. And signposting is a bit just like it sounds. You're planting a flag to let people know where you're going. It's the street sign, it's the road map. Imagine you're taking your readers by the hand, taking them in the car and say, hey, we're gonna drive from Dallas to New York, a long trip. But along the way, we're gonna stop off in Kansas. Then we're gonna go to uh, Nashville and check out some country music. If you take a detour to California, you need to let them know. The research is really complex and our job is to make it simple simple, accessible, and easy to understand without dumbing it down. Signposting is going to help you do that so your readers don't get whiplash if you take hard lefts and hard rights and leave them lost and confused along the journey. So this is 29 pages, it's a complex article, and this article I think brilliantly executes this technique. So let's go down to the end of the introduction, where basically, very simple, the authors say, in this article, this is what we're going to do. We're gonna start here and then go there. And next after that, we're gonna next show the following. It's really creating a roadmap, like I said, for taking the reviewers, or, or in this case, when you submit the article, or your readers or supervisors or whoever's looking at this, giving them the map for where they're gonna go and what comes next. This is an incredibly common defect. I would say about eight out of the 10 students I work with don't have this in there. And sometimes it simply happens because you're so close to your writing that you know where you're going and you forget what it's like for somebody who's looking at this for the first time who isn't in your head, isn't able to reconstruct those thoughts. And what to you seems quite linear to them is a massive detour from California to Florida and then uh, back over to Montana. So uh, I'm gonna show you this in a student's writing and very simply how you can fix it before going on to a couple more examples. So uh, I've got an example from a student here and similar kind of structure, introduction. Uh, we're not gonna get into the content of this, but you can see here that in between these two sections, diving into the meat of the article, just like the peer review paper we just saw, we are missing that simple little paragraph that you can inject that says, in this article, we're gonna look at say the status of development in Nigeria and we're gonna make the argument that you want to make. It could be that Nigeria is underdeveloped because of, in this case, the author is talking about moral decadence um, for that reason. And then where are we gonna go next? Outline those stops along the way and it's gonna help because most of the time your readers are just glancing. They're very quickly ducking in and out of the article, maybe even just reading the first sentence, scanning, skimming, just like this. You wanna make it easy for them to grasp what this is about if they want to read it and understand your argument. So check your introduction, make sure that's there. Next, I'm gonna show you how signposting plays out, not just there, but in the results section of your article, which oftentimes can encompass putting different sets of findings, packing them together, and again, you need to take your reader by the hand and show them where you're leading them to. So we're gonna turn back to the peer-reviewed literature to show you an example before we turn to a student. So here I'm turning again to a sociological paper, but this is really the case you'll find it across fields is just what I happen to stumble across. Uh, 38 pages, these tend to be long and complex, and the longer and more complex, the more signposting you need. You might not have ever needed this in an article or, or a piece that you've written an essay for a class where you've had three pages, but if you write a book like the manuscript or a full dissertation or long chapters, this is indispensable. So let's dive in. There's a section in the results, I think illustrates this simple technique brilliantly. And if I recall right, it's on page 19. Let's find it. Here's a subsection of the results you can see italicized. And at the top of that subsection, 
what does it do? It says, hey, here is where we are on a roadmap. We now turn to this. And this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna compare, compare estimations, right? You've located where in your results, your tables, figures, where in your bigger roadmap that you might've set out in the introduction, you are helping your readers to stay on the track with you as you're carrying them forward. I'm gonna show you exactly where this fits in in the results section in a paper of a student I've been working with. Okay, so here's a section a, of an engineering student I've been working with that needs desperately some signposting. And as you can see, the results and discussion section here just dive straight in. And that's like giving a reader whiplash. That can be, where, where am I? I'm lost. Very simple fix. You know, first, in the results, we're going to highlight right, what you're gonna do. We're gonna just describe the results of our main experiment, followed by a series of simulations however you've set it up, but you're helping locate the readers, again, where you are in that roadmap. You'll see here, it was my very first comment, this needs some signposting. And when you do this signposting, it's gonna make sure you, for yourself, it's gonna have this other added benefit, it's gonna make sure your structure is intact. Because if you can't set up your signposting, if you can't outline the roadmap of where you're taking your readers, it means you don't have clarity and structure in your own writing, and you shouldn't be writing yet until you've got that outline in place, which we cover in depth in another live video. You definitely gonna wanna check that out if you haven't already, because you can't signpost effectively if you don't have an underlying structure in place. If you don't have the underlying structure, you're not gonna have clarity, and you're certainly not gonna have direction in your writing. That's it, signposting. You can use it today, tomorrow, for the rest of your writing career. You'll wonder why you haven't done it and your readers, supervisors, reviewers, anybody is gonna thank you for making your complex ideas that much more accessible to them. For more tips like these, join my exclusive Facebook group where we can be in direct touch contact through the DMs. We do live workshops and we have a whole host of masterclasses you're gonna get a ton of value out of. I hope to see you there.